Hey everybody, we are now in our second tutorial here on the basics of Lua using Codia. So let's get to it. We're going to be looking at variables today and assigning variables. We did talk a little bit about variables last tutorial, but let's go in depth on what exactly is a variable. So for example, here on the right side again, this is my output and on the left side, this is where I'm typing in my code. So on line four here, uh, let's just create an X variable and X equals zero. And so now let's create uh, another variable and let's say hi. And remember what kind of types these variables are. This first one is, you remember what it's called? This first one is a number, whereas the second one is a string. So the first one we'll use with math and the second one is just for display of characters only. Now what we can do is we can print these and we can say print x and we will run it and actually let's do first print y and we'll run it and then on the right side it prints out zero and then it prints out high the other thing you can do here is actually put them together so let's get rid of this guy right here and let's run it and it will print them together with a little tab in between both of them does that make sense we can also do the type of x and then the type of Y, just to clarify and make sure that we have these correct. So that zero is a number and high is a string, right? Remember that from last lesson. All right. The other thing we can do is we can do multiple assignments in one particular line. So for example, if I do X comma Y, I want X to be zero, then I want uh, uh, Y to be high, high Y. <laughs> and then same thing here. It then dynamically puts zero into X and high into Y. And then when we print these out again, it should print out the exact same thing. So you can imagine how easy this would be if you were trying to assign a ton of variables, you are going to sell, uh, save yourself a ton of space by being able to actually add things quickly. So Z, well, Z will be negative, uh, negative 0.5 and A will be true, and B will be false, okay? So then we come down here, and we can print, again, each of these, if we do X, Y, Z, A, and B, and we run it, it will print every single one of those, which is very, very handy, okay? You see, you can see how that could really help you if you were trying to uh, print out a whole bunch of things at one point. All right, one of the, the cool things about Lua here is swapping variables. Sometimes you might want to switch something. So for example, if I say that X and Y are the two variables I'm gonna be working with, and I want to then switch them. So right now, if I print X and Y, uh, it will print out both one and two. Well, let's just say I wanted to switch the values of X and I want to switch the values of Y. All I have to do is this and it comes up really very easily. X is Y and Y is X instantaneously. So now when we go into print X and Y, we run it, they will be flip flopped, which is really, really handy. In order for to do, us to do this in a different language, for example, you'd have to come in here and you'd have to say copy equals X and then y equals x and then y equals copy and then if we hit refresh they'd flip flap around and that did not work that's probably what it is we'd have to flip flop it around boom yeah so you'd have to include this other variable of copy and that's just messy and a logic nightmare and so i would much just rather do this this would be much easier and boom, hit refresh, and there it is. You have swapped the values really, really quickly. Uh, in terms of order, so, let's, so for example, let's just do this. If I, I don't even know why you would wanna do this, but for example, we would print this here. Uh, you can imagine what it's going to print first. We'll get rid of lines six and seven. And you can say that X is gonna be one, and then X is going to be two. So you can imagine what is actually gonna spit out is X equals one here, okay? So the order is not really defined, so therefore the first one is uh, the one that goes into it, whereas the last one is kind of ignored. 
We'll refresh it again and it just goes into the same place, okay? All right, and then for example, let's just say we have our lists here, uh, variables, and we have X, Y, and Z. And again, we just do one and two. Well, let's come up here and let's print out X comma Y comma Z. It's going to ignore Z there and it's gonna say Z was never filled. Whereas if we come here and we add an extra number here on the other side, it's going to ignore that four as we did not dump anything into uh, that, that four didn't go into a particular variable. So these are the basics of assigning numbers, strings, and so forth to variables. Some of the helpful hints and tips that you will use later on as you are working with variables all the time. So uh, this is the second tutorial. Thanks for joining us, guys.